Hello, welcome to this lecture on digital communication using GNU radio. My name is Kumar Appaya and I belong to the Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Bombay. In this lecture, we will conclude our discussion of the Viterbi algorithm with an example. If you recall, in the previous lecture, we computed an interim incremental metric and we claim that the incremental metric can be used to make decisions on the fly when you perform maximum likelihood sequence estimation. The incremental metric had this form. Just to, remem just to remember the notation, the ZK was essentially obtained by, by taking the inner product of Y with SB at the KT at time instant. And if you now look at the H, right, that was the autocorrelation of P's evaluated at KT. Let us now perform this for the example which we were looking at. If you recall for the example we were looking at, we obtained an effective P of T that had this form. The form was this is 1, 2, 3, 4, the value here is minus half, it is half, the value here is 1. For this PT, we are going to now perform the Viterbi algorithm for a certain example, but as a prerequisite, we need to compute H, H0, H1, H2 and so on. So let us actually compute our values of H for this. H0, in this case everything is real and we will assume BPSK as well, is integral P of T, we are going to P star of T, so P, P, P square, this is very easy to evaluate. It is, if you look over here, the value is 1, the value is half, the value is minus half. So, you get 1 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4, that is 3 by 2, that is your H0. Now, for H1, you have to be careful. To compute H1, we can just do integral P of T and P of T minus capital T, remember, the rate of signaling, capital T is essentially 2, we have half a symbol per second. To do this integral, we can just shift this by 2. So, I am going to now delay this by 2, put 1 here, half here, minus half here. So, if you now perform this overlap integral, it is very evident that this 1 multiplies by minus half and you get minus half. And this is also equal to h of minus 1 conjugate, which is h of minus 1. In this case, it is real. And interestingly, in this case, there is nothing much else that you have to do. This is essentially what essentially all that you have. Okay. Now, let us move ahead. This lambda k, b k, s k gives you the incremental metric for the transition from s k to s k plus 1. Now, we are going to use this. So, let me just take this below, make a copy. Okay. I am just going to make a copy and paste it. Okay. And we are going to now perform an example. And the example that we are going to perform is one where we are going to use PPSK, okay. we are going to assume that B0 is always plus 1 then we have this sequence of received Y's, Y0 is minus 1, Y1 is 2, Y2 is minus 2, y 3 is 1.5. This is what is received. Okay. Y 0 does not really matter because y 0 is because we know b 0 is 1 already. We will use y 1, y 2 and y 3 to figure out what sequence was sent. To do this, we are going to draw what is called a trellis diagram of the states. What is a trellis diagram? In this case, we have BPSK. So, let us actually draw our trellis diagram. I am going to draw for B0, what are the possible values it takes? 
plus 1, nothing else. For B1, what are the possible values it takes? Plus 1 or minus 1. Now, if you look at the interpretation of that incremental metric, that was about going from Bs sk to sk plus 1. So, in this case, we were going from s1 to s2 and that can be using b1 or b2. That is basically the interpretation. For b2, two states. For b3, two states and so on. Now, the actual thing we have to do is to compute the matrix which are going to come here and that is what we are going to do using this particular expression. Okay. Now, let us look at this expression for the application here. Now, in the initial computation, okay, we, we are going to simplify this because there are some observations which we are going to make. Mod bk square is always 1 for bpsk. In fact, for any quam, it does not matter. So, and h0 is a fixed number. This term can go away. Similarly, in our case, what is our capital L? Our capital L is 1. Why? Because we computed H, okay? it had only a dependence on L equal to 1. So, we have our autocorrelation sequence essentially was minus half, 1, half, you know, minus half, 1, minus half. So, this has a dependence only on 1. So, it is actually M is equal to surprisingly K minus 1 to K minus 1. It has only one term. So, our incremental metric actually gets simplified significantly. So, our incremental metric, if you simplify this, will turn out to be, maybe I will write it below. Over here, it is B star k, Z k, B star k, Z k and remember, your Z k is basically what you get from the y. It is B star k, Z k minus and you have real part of B star k. In this case, the real part goes away, the conjugate goes away. It is B k times it is B k minus 1 h 1. Therefore, this number is actually half, this number is b k minus 1 and this number is just b k. Therefore, our simplified expression is going to be lambda k b k s k Oh, I, I can just simplify it easily. I am just going to write my z as y directly. So, I am just going to write this as b k y k. The middle term goes away because it was just 1 always and okay. why did I write this? Because this was minus half actually, I, I mean I am sorry minus half sorry because h1 was minus half this is a minus and minus that became plus half. So, now this became my metric b k y k plus half b k b k minus 1. Now, let us look at the values we got minus 1 2 minus 2 1.5. Now, we are going to write our first metric lambda k b 0 s k. What is the metric if the b1 is actually plus 1. Let us write it bk is equal to plus 1. Then what is the metric? We get 1 times y1 and what is my y1? y1 is minus 1, minus 1 plus half times minus 1 plus 1. Ah, sorry. bk y plus half bk bk minus 1. Yeah. So, if bk is plus 1 and I think my y y 0 is, I am sorry, y 1 is 2. I am so sorry. If you remember y 1 is 2, that is the mistake I made. So, I am sorry. Let me correct this. Yeah. So, let us do this again. bk is plus 1. So, 2 plus and bk is plus 1 half is 2.5. Let us compute the branch matrix for the other approach, 
if b k is minus 1, actually b 1, I wanted to write b 1 over here, let us actually correct it. Okay, so, this is b 1, if b 1 is minus 1, what do I get? y is still 2 and b 1 is minus 1, so minus 2 and b 0 is plus 1, so minus half, this is minus 2.5. So, what I am going to do is, in this particular trellis diagram, I am actually going to write these metrics, because these are the metrics that I am going to see, I essentially want to maximize this quantity, this lambda b. So, I am going to write these on the bar over here. So, 2.5 for going here, minus 2.5 for going here. So, what does this mean? The branch metric based on the y I got for going from plus 1 to plus 1 is 2.5, for plus 1 to minus 1, b1 being minus 1 is 2.5. Now, you cannot say that because the minus 1 metric is smaller, of course, you will, I mean, you then I have to decide it is plus 1, you cannot do that because you are doing a sequence wise detection. Therefore, you cannot make an incremental decision at this stage, you have to go to the next stage and then check. So, let us actually do that. Okay. Now, let us suppose that b1 is plus 1 or b1 is minus 1 and check out all the transitions that can occur based on this. Now, if you remember in our uh, expressions for in our discussion, we said that one symbol depends only on the next symbol. That manifests evidently over here because we have only one hop dependence. So, here b1 depends on b0, b2 depends on b1. Now, let us compute further matrix. Lambda k b1 and uh, this was actually s k was s2 let us say s1, so b1 we will say s, yeah, we will say b1 s1, yes. Okay. Now, what do we do? We are going to say if b2 is plus 1, if b2 is minus 1 and we are going to use this expression again. The only thing is our y, y is minus 2. So, y is minus 2. So, let us make the substitution. Okay. y is minus 2, b 2 is plus 1, so minus 2 and this is minus 1 times what is the previous, yeah, okay. So, we are going to have 4 metrics, I am sorry, yes. So, we need 4 metrics, I am sorry. Yeah. Now, because we have to check for 1 to uh, minus 1 to minus 1, minus 1 to plus 1 and so on. So, let us now look at all the 4 cases, b1, b2, okay. plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, minus 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, minus 1 and to recall our y2 is minus 2. So, since our y2 is minus 2, we have in this case b2 is plus 1, minus 2 and over here the product is plus 1, one5 Next, b1 is plus 1, b2 is minus 1. So, let us put it here b2 is minus 1. So, minus 1 times 2 is 2 plus and we have half times this product that is minus half. So, 1 to minus 1 we have 1.5. Next, we will do this one minus 1 plus 1. So, b2 is plus 1. So, you will get minus 2 over here plus half times the product minus half, this gives me minus 2.5. Finally, minus 1 plus 1, for minus 1 plus 1, sorry, minus 1 minus 1 rather, I have minus and to minus is plus, so 2 plus and minus 1 to minus 1 half 2.5. So, now these 4 metrics can be entered into the trellis. 
1 1 corresponds to minus 1.5 let us do that. So, I am going to write minus 1.5 over here let me write it more neatly. Similarly, 1 minus 1 corresponds to 1.5. So, 1 to minus 1 corresponds to 1.5. Next, minus 1 to 1 corresponds to minus 2.5. Finally, minus 1 to minus 1 corresponds to 2.5. Okay. Let us now pause for a minute. These increments are additive that is what we proved in the previous lecture. Therefore, let us now observe that over here, over, in, over here there are two paths combining plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus 1. So, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, what is the metric? 2.5 minus 1.5 which is 1. Plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, what is the metric? Minus 2.5 minus 2.5 is minus 5. So, for plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, since both of these branches combine here, you can make the decision that among these two, only one of them is optimal that is this one, not the other one because the metric for this is larger. But now there is a merging of two different trellis paths in minus 1 also. So, at minus 1, if you look at plus 1 plus 1 minus 1, it is 2.5 plus 1.5 which is 4. From plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 to minus 2.5 plus 2.5 it is 0. Therefore, at here this is the optimal path, but you cannot make a decision among these two paths right away because further sequences also have a role. Why? B2 remember depends on S3 as well that is B2 has some part of its information going into the next symbol. So, you cannot make these decisions, but what you have already done is you have said of the 1, 2, 3, 4 trellis paths available, only 2 are surviving. In other words, only these 2 are the likely sequence patterns that I am going to hold till time 2. Of course, later on you can if they, they you know if the, if the matrix diverge significantly you can make decisions of course, but these are the 2 surviving paths. Let us just do one more step. Okay, Y3 is 1.5. Let me now do uh, lambda k lambda k p2 s2 that is this metric indicates what we go to the next. Okay. Now, let us do the same thing. Uh, I am just going to write my y, my y is y3 is minus y3 is 1.5. I do not I have to check the sign 1.5 y3 is 1.5. Now, b2 b3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and just to remember our metric is b k y k plus half b k b k minus 1 ok. Our b k is this. So, this is going to give me 1.5 plus half which is 2. This is going to give me minus 1.5 minus half which is minus 2. This is going to give me 1.5 minus half which is 1 and this is going to give me uh, minus 1.5 plus half which is minus 1. So, 1 to 1 is 2 let us write that 1 to 1 is 2. 1 to minus 1 is minus 2. Then minus 1 to 1 is 1 and minus 1 to minus 1 is minus 1. So, this is minus 1, this is plus 1. Now, let us compute the matrix for the others also. Let us compute the matrix. So, now over here there are two surviving paths. So, for the straight on path to go from plus 1 to plus 1 is actually going to be 2.5 to minus 1, 2.5 minus 1.5 is 1 plus 2 is 3. Then if you now look at this particular path and if you now look at 2, if you, okay, let us look at this. This path and these, this path merge over here. 
So the straight on path has 2.5 minus 1.5 is 1 plus 2 is 3. Then this particular path has 2.5 plus 1.5 which is 4 plus 1 is 5. Therefore, this is the only path that is going to survive. And this path essentially goes away. But there is also one more possible path over here which you have to take into account. 2.5 plus 1.5 minus 1 that gives you 3. These two paths are surviving because the other goes away. Why is this decision correct? The reason is because even if you keep going further and further, the matrix at the points where the paths merge are not going to essentially change because as you make decisions in future, you don't need to revisit these past matrix because the decisions about these symbols can be made based on the information that you have. So therefore over here for example, because both the optimal paths tra traverse this route, you can safely say that the optimal decision for B2 is minus 1 and the optimal decision for B1 is 1. Even when the paths don't merge, if at some points they merge, you can make decisions. If they don't start merging, you can still stop at some point and try to make optimal decisions based on the branch matrix. This algorithm is the celebrated Witterby algorithm which is used for maximum likelihood sequence estimation. It is also used in hidden Markov model based applications wherein you have these situations where a continuous stream of inputs is being made available to you and you are computing a probabilistic metric that allows you to optimize. So in this manner, you can actually <coughs> revisit the derivation of this Witterby algorithm, you, uh, rather the branch matrix and then see how you can put these on a trellis and the trellis essentially allows you to make computations. Implementing these is very easy in to, to do in Python. For example, you can just search on it, you will find Witterby algorithm implementations for Python. This exact implementation we are not going to do in GNU radio directly because of the fact that implementing this in GNU radio is rather cumbersome and tedious. Instead, one, one step that we are going to further make is to say that, okay, maximum likelihood sequence estimation is good, but can I do something simpler? Okay, if you want to do that, then you have to make a realization. So, the realization is that maximum likelihood sequence estimation is optimal whatever other method you want to use will be suboptimal. Now, even though MLSD, maximum likelihood sequence estimation can be done, do you still want to use some other methods? It could be because even this complexity is too much for you to implement and you are okay with some other method where you just have to, let's say, deconvolve the channel or find out the symbols in some other way which could be suboptimal. So, that is what we will be seeing in further lectures. So, to summarize, we have basically done the branch metric related computations and the MLSC is the optimal detection strategy in AWGN. But if you recall a naive strategy that is trying out all possible combinations of symbols requires exponentially many computations. In the example that we discussed, you required 4 power 1000 computations for 1000 QPSK symbols which was prohibitive. So by breaking the computation down, we can exploit combinations and sequences. That is, if you get incremental metrics and then compute, you can make decisions on the fly as you as and when you start observing some patterns that, okay, this is the optimal decision path that you have to take. Now the subsequent discussions are, okay, Witterby algorithm is great, but are there some simpler and easier to implement methods that we can use to make our decisions on symbols? That is going to be our next task. So, in summary, while Viterbi algorithm is optimal, there are suboptimal algorithms also which can come in handy and that is what we are going to see in the subsequent lectures. Thank you.